All right, how are we all going today? Just attending the uh, something digital conference at South Bank this today and tomorrow. And I had a very interesting conversation with someone in the um, in the meeting about a guy who owned a jewelry store and was trying to sell ten thousand dollar plus engagement rings over the internet. Now. We would normally, we all laughed at that, but one of the funniest things about the story was that somebody actually bought a $10,000 engagement ring from this guy's campaign. The first thing that sprung to my mind when I was talking to this guy was, what was the return on investment on that? Like, (laughs) did he spend a thousand bucks and made $10,000? What he actually found over time was only one or two people actually did do that, and very few people um, are willing to add a very expensive diamond ring to cart. Can you imagine? It's incredibly expensive. Why would you do it? The other thing I think which was important is knowing your numbers. So what would your numbers be in a situation like that? Well, there's this magical marketing invention called the funnel, which everyone seems to love in digital marketing, at least or in business growth, that tracks the metrics of your sales from start to finish but also it provides an interesting ladder for you to climb. I like to think of it as a ladder because, I don't know, I like visual metaphors. Um, One of the things that I think was most important about that was that you have three stages really in any kind of e-commerce business or any kind of platform that are generally accepted as being the norms for this. And I like to think of them like awareness, people know about it. Engagement, people are engaging with you, they know you, they trust you, they like you. And then purchase or sometimes called conversion. Now for our $10,000 ring example, what's interesting is somebody went through that phase all digitally, all online, and that's starting to become the way things probably will be done in the future. My point is, what are the numbers and how do you measure that? Uh, the The reason I'm saying this is because the guy in the story kept saying, I want more people to add to cart. So you have to take a step back from that and go, okay, how do people add to cart in this situation? What's the step they step take before they um, add to cart? What are they thinking about three days, 14 days, uh, 21 days, 28 days before they purchase that ring? And can you get into their mind and serve them content up until that point in that window of time when they're considering? Most people go straight for the purchase. I mean, while that's probably acceptable in small uh, items, like, you know, your, your dinky AliExpress stuff or, um, you know, cups, mugs, shirts and, you know, stuff like that. I think you need to have a different kind of strategic approach when you're trying to sell things over so many thousands of dollars. You've got to think of, a, of concepts like touch points. So how many times does that person have to see you, know you and understand you prior to them adding to cart? And there's this useful um, ladder metaphor that I was talking about. You have your add to cart, a couple of steps down from that, you're in the engagement phase, right? So you're thinking about how do I engage with people in an open and friendly way or in a live like this or something of that nature where you're you're, uh, walking through the steps to get there. And it's not about the funnel necessarily, it's about the processes of human decision making and how people think when they're going to buy something. What are they thinking three days before? This is the beauty of digital that makes it so much more different from traditional. You can get inside their mind and track their behavior to see what they're doing, where they're going, what they're searching. It's all there now, right? For better or worse. Um, You know, as I sit here in this room at the South Bank campus of Griffith University looking around, you know, I've started thinking about cameras and surveillance because that just might be the paranoia kicking in because I'm at a digital conference and I probably should be in one of those sessions right now, but I'm doing this instead, so cram it. Um, when you're going up that ladder, what you need to think about is this. Are people looking at my product? And then ask this question, whereabouts are they in that decision-making cycle? In another video, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do something like this, but you know, it's gonna be hard when I'm holding a camera like this. And I'm going to walk you through what to optimize for at the various phases. One trick that I like to use is to run awareness ads and engagement ads to get people to understand, sorry, to measure if people will engage with it at the first stage and then put the full process there, put the cart there, but figure out at what points of engagement are they moving to the next stage and to map out the whole process from start to finish. I think it's a very important aspect of the digital that you can measure everything 
And you've got to think of in terms of purchase cycle. So let's put this into a practical example and how it might work um, in the real world, not just in the world of the uh, fake world. So that might be something like, okay, my wife's and my anniversary is coming up you know, in, 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 next year and I'm thinking of spending 10 Gs, laying down 10 Gs on a ring for my wife, right? Now, I may be two months away from that. I may be 11 months away from that. But if I'm considering it, if I'm thinking about it, I'm going to search for it. So as a marketer, you can go and look at those search terms and you can look at those things and see what people are looking for when they're thinking about it. That's the beginning of the process, right? That's the first rung on the ladder. The next rung is they might start searching different websites and start thinking about what the best pricing options are. Then you can break down different terms and figure out, ah, oh, right, so this is the way that this works. There's this, this ladder we go through. Then it's like, okay, now they're getting thinking about purchasing, they're visiting certain websites and uh, they're looking at rings. They might go to a couple of jewelry stores. And those of you that are more astute know about geofencing, which is a somewhat ethically dubious method, but you can actually track people's behaviors now based on uh, where they visit and how they visit if it's legal in your area. So there's some controversy about that, but let's just say you're not that sophisticated. You have a web presence. Now here's where the interesting part is. It does, the final purchase may be an in-store visit to look at the ring, to get the size right, to get the measurement right. Now, if you're a local business or you're a jeweler that sells high-end jewelry, the first thing you might be thinking is, well, isn't it digital? Isn't it online? Are images just drive people to my cart? Well, what is your cart exactly? And isn't a sale a sale? You may not even have a cart online. You may have a process that says, look, book an appointment um, using my online scheduling system. Or that third step might be the sale happens in store. And this brings me to my final point. It's amazing to me how many people don't know how their sales process works. But when you're going to play around in digital, you have to understand that process really clearly and you have to think about the ladders like the awareness how are you raising awareness how are you engaging people that's way more important now than it's ever been and then how are you um, setting up a process for the sale so what's your sales process so the first two steps are really marketing and the last part is probably sales um, so it was interesting to see all these presentations today and, and I'm going back to watch one shortly on personal touches and flybys so hopefully that'll be good uh, but I'll finish up this one by saying, remember any kind of process where you're trying to sell something, think of those three steps. There's awareness, you're raising awareness. Digitally, what, are you, what assets are you deploying to raise awareness? Um, and again, I would recommend highly that you map out your sales process from start to finish and think about what, uh, what, what are the steps, what's the journey? And I like to think of things in four steps because I'm a simple person and it makes it very easy for me to understand. So. I like to do this analysis with people that work with me and I say, okay, so when somebody buys from you, what's the step they take before that? Oh, they do this, or why are they doing that? Oh, they do it because of these reasons. Okay, so why are they doing that and when do they start thinking that way? Why am I doing that? Because the art of digital, especially digital business growth, is you have to be present and guiding people through uh, when they're making those choices. The reality of it is we're not forcing anyone to do anything. And if you are, that's unethical. Stop doing it. I can see you there. Stop doing it. Um, that's a lame teacher joke. But uh, going through that ladder and then looking back on the journey and the time that it takes, you want to be the person that they come to because you've given them something that they can work with. You've, you've given them value at each one of those decision points. But that's what that whole thing's about. So anyway, again... Um, but think about that. Think about, okay, when somebody makes a sale, sorry, when I make a sale, what's the step that people take before that? Someone would say, well, they walk into the store and they say hello and then I convert them. No, no, no. Something drove them to walk in. Something they're thinking about. Maybe it's a fashion icon brand like um, Hugo Boss. They, they want to speak for some kind of presentation or there's some kind of emotional connection to the brand. What you want to be aware of when you're sending out your messages via these platforms is to connect with that and understand what they're thinking and why they're thinking it. And then go through your ladder. What are the three stages of those ladders if you're intent on making sales? Really, this comes to building authentic connections, as I keep saying in these videos, building those authentic connections with people and doing things in an ethical and, and um, 
a way that doesn't invoke the ire of the European Union. So I'll close this out by saying if you have any questions about this process, comment below or hit me up on Messenger. Or if you're watching this on Facebook, leave a comment. I am more than happy to answer any questions that you have at this point. Thank you and uh, have a good rest of today or if it's somewhere else, rest of tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.